Good afternoon. I'm Mark Allen with Gaper.io, and I'm here today with Sandra Rausch, the C, uh, co founder and CEO of Safety Wing. Good afternoon, Sandra. Good afternoon. Great to be here. Great that we're glad you could join us today. So, to start with, can you share a brief background of yourself and your work experience? Yeah, so I am uh, from Norway, I moved here to San Francisco four years ago uh, to with a previous startup I had. And I've been living here ever since. I, uh, before that, I was an economist at the, for the Norwegian government, working with the mm. uh, social safety net there. And then I left that to uh, work with uh, tech startups here in San Francisco. Mm, very interesting. So the Norwegian government, that's, that's quite fascinating. So what has been your experience with remote employment, both as an employee uh, and an employer? And I wonder if Norway allows um, remote work uh, yeah, so uh, what has been my experience? Well, you know, when ever since I was very young, uh, I have been uh, working uh, remotely. Um, and, uh, you know, as a teenager, I had this little web hosting company with a Dutch and Romanian friend I met online with that. Uh, and um, uh, so, and that was like early 2000s. Mm -hmm. uh, I, um, uh, you know, after I left the parliament and I wanted to start up, the, the, we were, had to build our company and we had a few choices. We decided to build it remotely uh, because uh, why? Well, <laughs> mostly because I wanted that freedom and flexibility for myself. And, uh, and I also saw that, you know, there was a lot of benefits uh, to it. Uh, it seems like the way of the future. So, uh, uh, so now this is the second company, and now we are solving problems for other companies that are uh, employing people remotely. And as for uh, working remotely in Norway, it's becoming increasingly common. You know, many Norwegians, they love to be at their cabins in the mountains or by the sea. And uh, now with COVID, many companies like here have switched to remote. So I think it's, gonna, it's getting a lot more common there too. Oh, interesting. And do you have employees in Norway? Yes. Ah, very interesting. So I'm trying to remember, is it, uh, it was Nokia, are they Norway or Finland? I think they're Finland, right? Finland, yeah. Finland, yes. Okay. So what do you think is the future of remote employment and what do you think can be done differently to make it more effective? I think that uh, the future of remote employment is that almost every job that can be done remotely will be done remotely because there are uh, economic uh, drivers and preference drivers that are, you know, all pointing in the right direction. Basically, both employers and employees want at this point to switch to remote if they can. Uh, the drivers from the employer side is usually, you know, we hire a remote team. So when we put out a job remotely, we get many hundred applicants. Uh, so getting enough applicants is not, you know, finding the right people is uh, mm -hmm. not that hard when you hire remotely compared to uh, when you just uh, can hire locally, mm -hmm. um, you know, if, as an as an employee, you know, being able to work from wherever, being able to work from home, or but perhaps more importantly, being able to work from wherever, so that I can go to you know prolong trips to Europe to visit my family and keep working from there, right? Mm -hmm. Or I can go to Tulum, Mexico, for a prolonged uh, holiday. And keep working from there, and uh, and all of those, uh, you know, that's an incredibly uh, life uh, style upgrade uh, that uh, I would be, uh, I would have to be paid a lot more to give that up, uh, and uh, that's how I think a lot of people feel. You know, I, I agree with you on that, and and I know your your company really Safety Wing has a very unique product. It's actually geared towards the remote worker. Uh, so can you tell us what your product is, uh, who you act, actually do tailor it to and, and how you got started? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so so we have uh, two products at uh, Safety Wing. So we have uh, Nomad Insurance. Nomad Insurance is uh, travel medical insurance uh, bought by digital nomads, which is a subset of remote workers. I suppose all remote workers are potential digital nomads mm -hmm. in the sense that you can move. Mm -hmm. But uh, our particular product is for when you're abroad. So the typical customer is like an American, but they can be from anywhere uh, who are in 
uh, like you mentioned before the show, um, Thailand for a year, right? That's the typical customer. And they buy our uh, travel medical plan on a monthly subscription that's $40 a month, very, very low cost. And mm -hmm. uh, you can kind of cancel it whenever it's very flexible simple product and uh yeah so that's nomad insurance and then we launched six months ago remote health which is our sort of full-fledged health plan it's also global uh you know all our products are global as in they work in every country the same way um and uh, but this one is sort of like a full health plan that you would kind of think about in the u.s like even though it's a low deductible health plan um that covers everything it's meant to be your primary health plan so anything from uh, kind of uh, preventative care to like long-term cancer treatment and 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 would also cover pre-existing conditions um and you can buy that sort of either as an individual remote worker or as a company that has a team remote team interesting and does it does this insurance work in all countries or do you have are there some countries that by because of regulations don't allow it um, yeah, we have a couple of exception countries. Um, I, uh, yeah, uh, th there's like a list on the website. We have 175 countries, so I, uh, oh. I can't list the, the exceptions off the top of my head, but there's like, well, you've got most of them. You got 170. <laughs> we've got most of them. And then there is like, but there is still a, like another 19 or something where there are some kind of limitations. Yeah, interesting. And, and actually, I have a potential customer living with me. My son is a web developer, and he's uh, once uh, things clear up, he's thinking of going to uh, Southeast Asia for you know a little uh, digital nomad life. You know? Yeah. Well, there you go. That's pretty much uh, can't be more uh, typical of our uh, customer base than that exact demographic, actually. Yeah. So, so interestingly, you you actually are in San Francisco, but. Um, but I don't. You don't have an office in San Francisco, right? Or maybe you do. Well, we do actually have like a safe doing house uh, where we do have team gatherings four times a year, where mm -hmm. we kind of like we fly in the team and we do planning sessions and things like that. And I'm currently sitting in that that office. Okay, and is that your actual home, or is that um, just a house dedicated to the company? It's a house dedicated to the company, and then my actual home is across the bay in uh, Berkeley. Ah, very nice, and. How did you incorporate, I, you know, the idea of remote into Safety Wing? You started out remote, right? Is, is it just mm -hmm. like always been part of the culture? Oh, absolutely. Like, um, oh, I mean, we are on uh, we, much further than that. So we we are uh, we are essentially convinced that the future will be remote and that that will have a really profound consequence and one of the sort of big changes happening in our lifetime. There are many sort of sci-fi predictions that are not going to come to fruition, but remote work, I think, is one of those that will. And, uh, uh, you know, it has some profound consequences, uh, I think. Uh, one of them is that you get a global labor market. And when you have mm -hmm. a global labor, labor market, then the infrastructure set up to support that labor market, you know, including contracts, payments, benefits, other mm -hmm. things, has to be uh, rebuilt to work uh, on that basis. And uh, so, so that's kind of what we are trying to do. We're, the the project we're on is not just to you know sell the products that we have. It's also to put, try to build a global social safety net. And and then we kind of have to take every product that was in the Norwegian social safety net and recreate it for this sort of uh, um, modern global internet economy. And and that's interesting. Is your product um, based on the Norwegian social net or the U.S. social net? Uh, well, I know more about the Norwegian one. Okay. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't, I literally don't know. I would assume it's, you know, comparable or better than ours. Yeah. I mean, uh, if sort of, if you were to think about principles, it's, uh, it's more universalist in, 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 in the Nordic and to some degree German compared to many other European countries and, and English speaking countries. So, uh, Universalist meaning, for example, that let's say something like uh, retirement in Norway. So there's like a minimum retirement and that's sort of flat. Um, so instead of it being like an insurance where it's like a percentage of your income, 
there's mm -hmm. like a flat one and it's yeah. the same for everyone yeah. and you have it's not like that for all the things but in it's a in that direction that's mm -hmm. a kind of a way it is different um so like a, an outer you know an outlier example of in in a in this direction it would be something like universal basic income right that's like mm -hmm. you go all the way in that direction in the sort of mm -hmm. universalist uh, direction but uh, Norway certainly has uh, th that's one way it is different um, it's quite simple you know uh, working with an original so social safety net you could read the original documents and, and understand it as a normal person it's not a thousand pages it's you know just a few pages and it's internally coherent and it makes a lot of sense so uh, we certainly want to bring that part into it but it comes to you know, but when it comes to you know building products and um, you know we we build one product at a time and we have to make it sort of simple global digital um, first and we have to learn about them and doing them well and part of the journey is learning to do those things well mm -hmm. and you know yeah very interesting so um, the ongoing pandemic really forced everyone to go remote uh, back in March you already were remote um, but just curious, did that cause any challenges or, or roadblocks that you didn't expect for your, both yourself and for your customers? Yeah. Um, so we were already remote. Our customers were remote. So that part was fine. I know. <laughs> uh, but we also have customers all over the world, right? Mm -hmm. And we included uh, lots of, we have lots of evacuation stuff in the policy. So we can ev evacuate people who are in sort of political trouble or nature, mm. you know, cat catastrophe trouble and other, other troubles. So we actually uh, had in our policy to evacuate anyone who wanted to, you know, get home. So it was a very intense time where we had to help out a lot of people who were wondering what to do and, and we evacuated them, uh, many of them. So that was uh, that was a big uh, part of it, and then we had to kind of redo our policy because uh, you know it wasn't really made for the pandemic um, perfectly. Mm. Uh, at the same time, we launched this remote health product, which was like the most fortuitous time. That was on March third, sort of right as uh -huh. COVID happened, and every company went remote. And well, we're kind of the only one who has that kind of a product like uh, a global health insurance for remote teams or that's that's only us and and then suddenly everyone went you know that became more relevant for so um so on that product we had like uh 1200 percent growth from you know march till 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 september uh on the nomad product uh you know had a big resurgence lately you know, mm -hmm. the last quarter, like a doubling. And uh, what that has been caused by is a lot of people who went remote. And then after a while, they figured out, well, actually, I don't have to live here uh, mm -hmm. uh, because I now have a remote job. So, and, you know, people are going on road trips around the US. Uh, uh, some other people are going to Tulum, Mexico, or Croatia, or Barbados. The, there are these places that have implemented these kind of remote work visas or nomad visas the, there are many countries now where you can't go as an american tourist but you can go as an american nomad or remote mm -hmm. worker and um so yeah very interesting so is that a lot of your customer base are they doing that they're they're actually like maybe someone in san francisco that's a nomad will just say hey i'm gonna go work in england for a couple months yeah and uh, no, uh, yeah, certainly, uh, nomads mm. is a big part of our customer base. Yeah, very interesting. So it's interesting. Um, we at Gaper, we we actually provide remote workers to customers to our customers, right? And you provide health insurance to remote workers. So it almost seems like a natural fit that you know we could offer. That would be a benefit we could offer to our employees. Would you? I mean. It just seems yeah. like a natural. Wouldn't you agree? No, I mean, my previous company was, it's not exactly Gaper, but it was, uh, it's called Superside. So it was like uh, some of the elements of Gaper, but like with design teams. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, this is the whole genesis of Safe Doing was that I 
had a company like Averse, we thought about providing benefits for the people, mm -hmm. you know, working through on on the platform and and found that nobody offered that because we were spread out around the globe. And besides, we needed a lot of flexibility and ideally we needed an API, like we had a lot of, you know, special requests. Um, so that was actually the discovery moment where I saw like, oh, this, this is, uh, this is a problem. Mm -hmm. And, um, and uh, that's kind of what we've, we've been building it for. So no, I absolutely do think that, you know, right, you know, these days, you know, it's not that common, but I think part of the reason why it's not that common to, for, you know, a company like gave her to, you know, have benefits is just because it's so difficult, mm -hmm. right? And that's what we're trying to do something about to make that, you know, really, uh, a really easy benefit to do in also for remote workers. Yeah, I mean, and one of the difficult things is that, you know, multiple countries and they all have their own yeah. rules. Like, I mean, we basically do the equivalent of 1099, right? So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then, so, I mean, it, it, it actually is a way to offer benefits to employees. So, so, I mean, it sounds like you've got a great product. Why don't you, uh, I'll give you a plug. Can you tell us what your website is where people can learn more? Yeah, that is www.safetywing.com. Okay. And can they, can they sign up on there? Yeah, you can sign up there for the nomad insurance, which is like 30. If you're going abroad, it's uh, $37 a month. If you, Or you can get signed up for the regular health insurance, which is like 150 Wow. Well, I actually am going to look at it after that because I'm not paying more than 150 <laughs> so, Yeah. It's extra if you're when you're in the U.S., by the way. Sorry about that. I saw that. And I think it's extra yeah. when you're in the too, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. So you get a double up. Sorry yeah. about that. But I'll still take a look. You never know. It might still be worth it. I'll, I will definitely look. So yeah, we'll, yeah. Well, Sandra, right. I want to thank you for your time today. I, you know, this is a, a brilliant idea. I think I'm surprised someone else didn't think of it sooner, especially one of the big insurance companies, you know? Yeah, so, no, uh, I, I, they, they haven't. And I'm, I'm glad they haven't. So we, uh, uh, but someone had to do it and, uh, and uh, it's uh, proving to be a very timely, timely product to make for sure. Yeah, I, yeah, you're, yeah. I mean, you're March third. What a good, I mean, that was yeah. two weeks before it, man. Exactly. Very good timing. So, well, Sandra, I want to thank you for your time today, and uh, best of luck in the future, and have a great night. Thanks, Mark. Okay, bye bye. bye.